Jimbo Fisher is out at Texas A&M, and let's just say that could have a pretty big impact on the recruiting trail for the Ducks. We're talking Oregon recruiting on today's episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. And we're back like we never left. Oregon fans, what's going on? How we living? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast, your premier podcast for all things Oregon football, and more importantly, Oregon football recruiting. You guys know how I love recruiting. I can't get enough of it. I eat, sleep, and breathe it. And boy, when I tell you things are about to get crazy between now and the early signing period, we're just about a month away. So if you guys like Oregon recruiting, you know I'm your guy. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at mtorussports, and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on today's video. Uh, greatly appreciate it. On the road to 3K, coming to you from a rainy and stormy Long Beach, California. It actually just started raining here on a Wednesday morning. Uh, I'll be honest, my apartment does not have the best uh, gutter system. So it's a little bit loud outside my window, but we're going to keep rolling. I got my microphone pretty close to me here just off the screen. So hopefully you guys can hear me okay and we'll have a, a good episode of the podcast today. Man, Jimbo Fisher out at Texas A&M. Kind of old news, it feels like now, right? That was on Sunday. I already wrote a piece over on DucksDigest.com talking about what the recruiting impact, what how Jimbo's firing will impact Oregon on the recruiting trail. But I wanted to get a podcast on here to talk to you guys on YouTube if you're watching us and on the podcast because that is a massive, massive recruiting power. And... You don't need me to tell you, Texas A&M has not been doing well on the field. But if you look at their recruiting rankings over the past couple of years, that hasn't mattered. Uh, they have really solidified themselves as a contender for any recruit uh, nationally. And they've become a familiar recruiting rival for Oregon on the recruiting trail. Heck, even in the days uh, of Dan Lanning. So now that Jimbo is out, Dan Lanning shut down any rumors of him going to anywhere else for another job of coaching anywhere else. Seems like a good time to talk about recruiting because the Ducks have the number six class in the country and they are poised to add even more talent in the 2024 recruiting class. But now that one of the biggest jobs in college football is open, you could potentially see some guys entering the transfer portal that have previous ties to the University of Oregon. So what I want to do in today's episode is hit on some of the recruits in the 2024 class that I think are worth um, worth mentioning and, and we could potentially see Oregon go after if they're not already going after them. And then maybe talk about some of the guys on the Texas A&M roster uh, that Oregon would uh, maybe, that it would benefit Oregon to go after if, that's a big if, if they decide to look for a new home um, want to make sure I'm being super clear. I put this in the story, but I haven't gotten any intel on any players from Texas A&M uh, intending to enter the transfer portal. Uh, this is all just hypothetical, and we have to see how things play out. With that being said, let's hit on some of these recruits in the 2024 Texas A&M class that Oregon could potentially find themselves going after. And starting off with a huge name, let's talk about Cameron Coleman the five-star wide receiver out of Phoenix City, Alabama, Central High School. You hear Alabama, and you should be thinking about Bo Nix, who is from Pinson, Alabama. The biggest reason I have Cameron Coleman as a name to watch here is, one, Oregon is still looking for reinforcements at wide receiver in the 2024 recruiting class. But two, I think the cat's out of the bag at this point. Cameron Coleman is currently coached by Patrick Nix, Bo Nix's father uh, at Central High School. So I think that that's a very clear connection between Oregon and uh, and Coleman. He does have an Oregon offer. I don't believe he's visited Oregon before, but there's reason to think that he could pop up on campus possibly. I just talked about the connection there, obviously, with Nix's dad. But um, 
He was asked by Chad Simmons about his commitment status after he uh, after the news of Jimbo's firing, and Coleman said, "Quote: I'm still committed to a And M, but my recruitment is still open." So very interesting uh, where things are at in terms of today's day and age in recruiting. Um, recruits say that they're still committed, but they're op- they're keeping the recruitment open. Um, the first sentence that you see when guys decommit is typically, "My recruitment is open." So I'm not saying that I expect Coleman to decommit. I just think that he is a big name worth watching, seeing that he is one of the best wide receivers in the country. And I think that Oregon has an inside track to, at the very least, get him out on campus for a visit if they'd like. The Ducks do have one more regular season home game against the Oregon State Beavers. However, that game comes the day after Thanksgiving, so figures it would be a little bit difficult to to get recruits on campus especially from all the way across the country in such a short amount of time that being said i do believe that the early signing period starts on the 20th which would give oregon at the very least two possibly three big recruiting weekends and opportunities to go after um, some big time recruits host them on campus in eugene uh, considering that uh, Oregon does look like they're on track to make a return to the Pac-12 title game, which is Friday, December 1st in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium. So that weekend would definitely be a little bit tricky. Uh, they wouldn't really necessarily have as easy of a time hosting big-time recruits on campus. But I think Cameron, Cameron Coleman is certainly uh, a huge name to watch here. He's the headliner of the a and class. Oregon already has a number of wide receivers in the fold, right? You have Jordan Anderson out of Newport Harbor, Dylan Gresham out of San Jacinto, Jack Ressler out of Modern Day, but they're still working on adding some pieces at wide receiver, just really offensive weapons here in the 2024 class. Roger Saliapaga out of Orem, Utah, kind of a wide receiver tight end hybrid. He was on campus in Eugene for that USC game for his official visit. I have him predicted to Oregon and uh, still feel really good about that pick, even though he has upcoming official visits to Tennessee and Auburn before he announces his college commitment on December 1st. Ducks also in the mix, I think, even though you don't hear a whole lot about it, I think they're still in the mix for Jeremiah McClellan, a 2024 Ohio State wide receiver commit out of St. Louis. Uh, I think those are the main names that you have to watch at wide receiver, but the next guy I'm going to talk about here I think is also worth a look. You have Terry Bussey, a 2024 athlete slash cornerback out of Timpson, Texas. He is also committed to the Texas A&M Aggies. He only committed in late September, so it hasn't even been two full months since since he's been committed. Cameron Coleman, who I just mentioned, committed on the 4th of July this year. Now, Bussey is admittedly, I think, going to be a little bit tougher of a pull than Coleman, as weird as that sounds. And I think it's just because he is an in-state guy. I think those in-state recruitments are incredibly highly contested, whether it's Texas A&M, Texas. Those are obviously the two biggest recruiting powers. You got TCU out there. You got Baylor. Uh, They're not doing very well under Dave Aranda right now. But I think Terry Bussey is a name to watch as well because he is just a really talented player who has really done it all. And the main reason is because he has previously had Oregon among his top schools. So I don't think that he is necessarily a guy that I would view as likely uh, for Oregon, but seeing that he has been in the mix earlier, I, I think that there I had heard that they, the Ducks were trying to get him onto campus previously prior to his commitment to Texas A&M. Uh, he had schools like LSU and Texas also involved, um, which definitely makes it a, a tough one, but you got to make you got to take your shot and, and with Bussy being listed as an athlete I think I saw some some graphic that had him just putting up crazy numbers on offense so even though he's listed on 247 as a cornerback commit um he is the number 1 athlete in the 247 sports rankings so I think that you have a little bit of of leeway there um for whatever it's worth uh it looks like the I want to say um the Aggies did name uh, rushing as their interim head coach. Uh, you have Elijah Robinson, um, who I think was the defensive coordinator at uh, Texas A&M. So um, I think that that would be um, 
that would be something that could potentially help the Aggies keep Bussy in the fold, seeing that they have a defensive guy in the interim. But um, yeah, the, the, this this creates massive uncertainty in College Station at a really difficult time. I mean, this is basically just about a week or so earlier than uh, when Oregon had their opening, right? They lost to Utah in the Pac-12 title game, and then Mario Cristobal took the Miami job, and then Dan Lanning comes in with such a limited amount of time to keep the class together and still try to make some big additions. Uh, I think that the main guys you got to look at there when Dan Lanning was hired, you got Jalo Florence back in the fold. USC was pushing hard for him during uh, the the uh, kind of opening, the head coaching search for the Ducks. Uh, Dave Iuli, um was another big time offensive lineman. Josh Connerly that came all the way in April, but that was still a massive win. So Oregon's been able to capitalize late in the cycle, no doubt about it. But Terry Bussey would be a phenomenal addition here. Athletes are always so intriguing to me because you can put them on either side of the ball, right? That's why they're listed that way coming out of high school. But um, I think right now in Oregon's 2024 class, you want a little bit more help on offense. It's obviously a defensive heavy class right now. And the Ducks do have three corners in the full with Sione Laolea, Dakota Fields, and Ify Obadegu. But boy, if they could get a guy like Terry Bussey in the fold, that would be absolutely massive. Rolling along, I have a couple more guys uh, that have connections to Oregon here in the 2024 class. Let's talk about Asendri Afua. Asendri Afua is a huge name in the uh, 2024 class that um, has previous ties to Oregon. He's currently committed to Texas A&M, so that would obviously uh, be kind of where Oregon is starting here in the 2024 class. But I, I had heard from a pretty good source uh, about Asendri Afua prior to his commitment to Oregon that he was kind of about to hop on board and, and commit to Oregon. This was when Adrian Clem was still on staff, along with Viani telling my vow. Asendri Afua and Brandon Baker are two of are probably the two biggest names along the offensive line on the West Coast, and Oregon was in a phenomenal spot for both of those guys prior to. Uh, Clem going to the NFL to coach for the New England Patriots, the team that drafted him coming out of college. So Asendri Afua, I think he's probably pretty locked in with Texas A&M. Uh, he's teammates with Jason Brown Jr. over there at O'Day High School in Seattle. I reported last week prior to the USC game that I was being told that Oregon was no longer recruiting Jason Brown Jr. So I don't think that uh, that's a battle that you necessarily need to keep too close of an eye on. In fact, I think I might switch my prediction from Oregon to Washington uh, later this week. Um, that was a guy, Jason Brown Jr. He was down to Oregon, Washington, and Michigan State. Tucker obviously got fired at Michigan State, and it seems like uh, Oregon is uh, prioritizing other guys in the 2024 class. I would think that that's Nate Frazier, if not just moving on to the 2025 class, seeing that I would think it's likely Noah Whittington comes back in 2023. Uh, maybe Bucky Irving comes back too. You never know, but you got a lot of tread on those tires. So Asendri Afua was super, super strongly linked to Oregon during his recruiting process before he committed to Texas A&M. But I mean, maybe he's worth a call. Maybe you can, can capitalize on some of this uncertainty following Jimbo Fisher's firing in the, uh, in the 2024 recruiting class here as the signing period looms. Another guy that is worth mentioning, just real quick, I don't think there's a whole lot there, but another guy mentioning worth mentioning is 2024 Tapello, Mississippi linebacker Tristan Jernigan. He is a verbal commit to the Aggies, committed to the Aggies back in May, and there was some Oregon interest here. Uh, he does have an Oregon offer, I believe, and he had Oregon among his top schools along with Texas A&M. I want to say Georgia was another school there, so... I haven't heard a whole lot of buzz between Oregon and Tristan Jernigan, but seeing that there's a guy that you have some previous ties to, there there has been some interest there. Uh, looks like he also took uh, a, a visit out to Alabama. Um, I think that this is a guy that you maybe want to circle back on, but the Ducks already have a really, really good linebacker haul and Kamar Matuti, who is going to be uh, honored as an Adidas All-American today on Wednesday, November 15th. Uh, you also have Dylan Williams out of Long Beach Poly and Braden Platt uh, out of Yelm, Washington in the Northwest. So you already have a great linebacker hall. Not really sure that Jernigan is much of a need, but 
But hey, that's a guy that has previous ties to Oregon and, and was being recruited by the Ducks at one point. So that's going to do it for the high school guys. Make sure you stick around after the break where we talk about potential transfer portal targets. Should there be some more movement for the Aggies in that regard? More coming up next. Taking a little sip of some, some Earl Grey tea on, like I said, a rainy and stormy Wednesday. I absolutely love the rain. Definitely missed it for, um, before I was back in Eugene, and then I got got some more of it. So it's soothing the soul to get uh, to get some back today here in Long Beach. But let's talk about potential targets at Texas A&M for the Ducks. Should we see these guys enter the portal? Again, this is all hypothetical. I haven't heard anything about these guys entering the portal, but if they do, Oregon would be a very interesting team to watch for them. Starting off with David Hicks. David Hicks is the biggest name that you got to watch here, and he was a huge, huge name in the 2023 recruiting class um, out of uh, Paytow High School in Katy, Texas. And I talked to David Hicks a bunch of times during the recruiting process when he was coming out of high school, and this guy loved Oregon. David Hicks was a beast coming out of high school, number seven recruit nationally, the number one defensive lineman, the number one recruit in the state of Texas. So you know that this is a huge name uh, that everybody is, is very well aware of. The Ducks were in the thick of it until he announced his commitment. Uh, I didn't think he was going to end up at Oregon necessarily. There was just so much buzz around Texas A&M. So if he were to enter the portal, you just I think just the biggest thing that you have to look at right now with with guys at Texas A&M that Oregon could potentially, you know, hey, it's it might be might be worth uh looking into these guys. Look at the direction of the Texas A&M program right now. I I tweeted this out the other day. I was so surprised. I still am so surprised at the caliber of talent that Texas A&M has been able to acquire, that Texas A&M has signed coming out of high school, and man, they just don't have much to show for it. So not only is Texas A&M in a really tough situation in terms of the conference that they're in and the SEC, um, Oregon's heading to the Big Ten, so things are going to get ramped up a notch. It's going to be more competition. It's going to be more difficult than the Pac-12, but the Pac-12 is great this year. But just look at the direction of the Texas A&M program. I just feel like there there hasn't been that much success. You look at what Oregon is doing defensively with, with guys like Tosh Lapoy and Dan Lanning, the, the production that they're going to have in the NFL draft, um, just how they're doing, that the sign is pointing, the arrow is pointing way, way up for Oregon. So do you want to stick around in Texas A&M while they – I mean, I don't know if I want to call it a rebuild, but this is a huge shakeup and the biggest shakeup they've had in six years since they brought Jimbo Fisher over from Florida State. So I just feel like you see what Oregon's doing this year. You see what they're doing on the trail and what they're going to do with the NFL draft. Um, maybe a guy like Jordan Birch plays his way into the NFL draft this year. He's been doing great. Brandon Dorless is absolutely killing it along the defensive line. So I think that a guy like a David Hicks, should he enter the portal, I think Oregon would be a very, very big option for him and uh, probably the leader, I would think. I mean, a bunch of schools would probably come after him, but Oregon probably finished number two behind Texas A&M uh, for David Hicks when he came out in the 2023 class. And, and Oregon's defensive line haul in 2023 was still phenomenal, but Texas A&M signed the number one class in 2022 the number one class all time, I want to say, in 247 sports history. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm just looking at it right now. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight five-star recruits. And so many of those guys came along the defensive line. And we're going to talk about some more of them uh, as we continue to go here. Another guy that I think is is worth mentioning uh, that Oregon could potentially show some, show some interest in um, should he enter the portal is um where did i put it uh linebacker damian sanford uh he was a 2023 linebacker that was actually teammates with david hicks and he did visit oregon so the ducks had some interest there uh with, with sanford i think that um you definitely want to continue loading up on linebacker talent 
I wonder what the linebacker room will look like next year for Oregon, given that Justin Jacobs did miss a lot of time this year. So I don't know if he's looking like a guy who could potentially hop to the uh, NFL draft or if he wants to come back for a full season with the Ducks. But either way, Damian Sanford was a pretty impressive recruit out of uh, the state of Texas for the Aggies here in the 2023 recruiting class. I'm trying to see what his rankings were so I could try to um, try to get those up for you guys. Give me just a second here. Sanford was a three-star guy, 6'2", 210 pounds, um, but he did have quite a few offers. Also seeing that he's listed as an edge, so you can never have too much edge talent, in my in my opinion. I mean, we're, we've seen how much having talented edge rushers has really paid off for Oregon here. Even though um, 247 had him as a three-star, but he was a four-star composite guy. 26 reported offers on the table. Alabama was also there, so Damian Sanford could be a name to watch um, should he enter the transfer portal, but we'll have to see, right? This is all hypothetical. Um, let's look at the 2022 recruiting class because, like I said, the 2022 class was loaded. We saw Anthony Lucas, uh, who was a five-star defensive lineman from Chaparral out in Scottsdale, Arizona. He hit the portal and ended up going to USC. Haven't heard a whole lot from him this year. Um, but I think it really look, you got to look at the defensive line. There are a number of defensive linemen that were either recruited by Oregon in the 2022 recruiting class or Georgia. I think when Dan Lanning was hired by the ducks, there were a lot of people that were, I don't know if I'd say speculating, but when any Georgia player hit the portal, I think there was a little bit of excitement or at least a little bit of intrigue in the back of the minds of a lot of Duck fans. Oh, are, 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 are the Ducks going to be able to get this guy? He, he's coming over from Georgia. I don't think it's that simple. But now there's a lot of guys in this 2022 class that had Georgia as a top school before they committed to the Aggies. So it's no secret that Dan Lanning is, is one of the best recruiters in the country. He was one of the best recruiters in the country when he was at Georgia. And he built a lot of relationships with these guys. This is why you see relationships are king. Relationships are so important, especially in today's era of the transfer portal. So you look at the defensive line where the Ducks have some really good players and where Dan Lanning obviously has his hand, defensive line, and then linebackers as well. There's a lot of guys here. Walter Nolan, five-star defensive lineman, the number two player in the country out of Powell, Tennessee, he chose to go to Texas A&M. That's a big time recruit. Shamar Stewart out of Opalaca, Florida. Uh, Monsignor Pace High School, 6'6", 272 pounds coming out of high school. LT Overton from Alpharetta, Georgia, Milton High School. Uh, another huge guy, number 17 recruit nationally. Those three guys were all heavily recruited by Georgia. Georgia has obviously become a defensive line factory, NFL factory overall. But um, I think it's it's becoming harder and harder to overlook what Dan Lanning is doing at Oregon. Am I saying that that is more impressive than what Kirby Smart is doing at Georgia? I don't think so. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying when you're looking at defensive powerhouses, schools that produce defensive talent year after year after year. It's becoming harder to overlook Oregon. It's becoming harder to not think about Dan Lanning, Tosh Lapoy, Tony Tuioti, Tony Washington, a former duck that is on the staff working with a defensive line and outside linebackers. This is a star studded staff. And with every game and more importantly, each season that they complete, the guys that they send to the NFL, that's all a recruiting pitch. That's all a statement. Look at what we're doing. Look at our body of work and give the Ducks a look. So I'm not I'm not saying that I think they're going to be necessarily front runners for a Walter Nolan, a Shamar Stewart, and LT Overton should they enter the portal. But hey, it's, it's worth a shot. Um, there, there's a lot of big relationships that uh, have been built over the years. I mean, and you, you see relationships uh, already coming into play um, last year, right? With, with guys like um, like a Tez Johnson, uh, the previous relationship with, with Bo Nix, 
Um, you see Casey Rogers with the coming over with Tony Tuioti, uh, as well as Jordan Riley. Those guys both came from Nebraska. So you could see some pretty big movement here. Um, and, and you could see Oregon ultimately in a position to capitalize uh, following Jimbo Fisher's firing. And I, I never really thought that Dan Lanning was going to, was going to go take the Texas A&M job. I, I never got the feeling that that was going to be the case. You look at the path to success. I think it is significantly harder at Texas A&M in the SEC, even though you have access to elite resources, he has great resources at Oregon and the big 10, I would think is easier to win than the SEC. So Oregon could be in a big spot to benefit. I think that the the transfer portal is is super interesting to follow uh, because it's it's synonymous with recruiting. And now that the coaching carousel has started, um, you're going to see guys um, all over the country hit the portal. Um, you have Texas A and M. That's the big job. Boise State, Andy Avalos, former Oregon defensive coordinator. Not that Oregon's necessarily going to, you know, m- maybe look at guys over there, but that's another opening. Uh, Mississippi State firing Zach Garnett. Uh, there, there's more buzz coming about uh, Chip Kelly, likely going to be fired by UCLA. That's a huge one. Dante Mora, former Oregon five-star quarterback commit. Maybe uh, maybe that's a guy who wants to explore his options. You never know. Um so in Arkansas is another one. They're not doing well. Um, Florida could potentially be one to watch. They're not playing very well. Billy Napier and the Gators and Xavier Phil Simon is a five-star safety that's uh, committed over there. Previously recruited by Oregon has visited Oregon. So hopefully you guys are seeing the picture here, not only with the, the early signing day, early signing period coming up next month, but, but the portal being open as well. With, with some big shakeup at, uh, you know, big schools across the country, it, you know, Oregon could be getting some serious, serious talent and you got to coach them up, but before you can coach them up, you got to get them talent acquisition has been, will be, and continues to be one of the biggest keys to success anywhere you are in the country. If you're coaching a college football team and the ducks have, made some serious noise this year on the field. They're playing some great football. Uh, I think that even though it was an ugly game against USC last week in the second half, you, know, you kind of let the Trojans stick around a little bit more. You were never, you were never worried that Oregon wasn't going to win that game. But uh, if you're going for style points, then that was definitely not the way they wanted to end it. But the pressure that they were able to get on quarterback, Caleb Williams, the, the most elusive quarterback in the entire country, his ability to improvise scramble is, is phenomenal seeing him play in person. I was at that game in Eugene last week, seeing the play of the defensive front, the defensive line was amazing. And um, I think Dan Lanning is just getting started. I really do. So it's going to be an interesting time. Um, I I don't want to say buckle up and I'm not saying buckle up because that's cliche. And I've said it before and it was kind of weird, but get ready. I'll just put it that way. Get ready for a crazy early signing period. Get ready for a strong close buy the Oregon Ducks in the 2024 recruiting class, get ready for a wild portal season, a wild coaching carousel. I'm here for all of it. You guys know me. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at mtaurus sports, like comment and subscribe on YouTube at Oregon football, Max Taurus, read all my stuff over on ducksdigest.com. Oregon has a big matchup with former Arizona state with former Offensive coordinator, Kenny Dillingham. There it is. Now the head coach at Arizona State. And you can't overlook the Sun Devils. Should be a, it's, It is a big matchup for Oregon in terms of what they want to accomplish in the big picture. And um, make sure you share the show. Share the Ducks Dish podcast with your friends, with your family, and with other Duck fans. Thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your day to talk some ball with me. Talk some Oregon Duck crouton. And we will catch you in the next episode of the Ducks Dish podcast.